What's up, it's your boy Dynas. At the end of this video, make sure you go to www.dynasmere.com. Check out our indigenous African art, jewelry, fashion, and accessories. Also, go to searchforhubu.com. Learn more information on the documentaries we're shooting. Also, contribute towards those documentaries. Last but not least, go to amazon.com. Search your name, Dynas Amir. Buy a book. I've written several of them, so please support and buy one. Uh, what I wanted to shoot this video on is an article written on negropen.com. I'll put the link to the article in the description box, and it was written by Mr. Let's see here, Arturo, I believe his name is Arturo Holmes. So shout out to the author. And this article is called 25 Ignorant Reasons African Americans Have Said They Would Never Go Back to Africa or Travel to Africa. These are the 25 dusty excuses. So uh, we're gonna run through these excuses. I'm gonna give my commentary on each one on why and, and these are educated people. I get a, I've heard just about all 25 of these. And, you know, if I would have compiled a list, it would have pretty much been on these same lines. And I would have listed these same excuses. But it's just sad how we allow the media to shape our view on places like Africa. And how pe many people still believe the bullshit they see on TV. So here's excuse number one, and I've actually, I've heard this excuse of, or I've gotten this excuse from educated people. Lions and tigers run wild everywhere. Lions and tigers run wild everywhere. So there are people, black people, with degrees, smart as hell, who literally believe that when you go to Nairobi, when you go to Dakar, Accra, Bamako, that when you get off the plane, you're going to be greeted by a lion or tiger who's, that's ready to maul your ass. There are people that believe that. Black people. That literally believe that. And they will use that. They will leverage this excuse on why they will not go to Africa. Number two, armies of young children run the streets and kill everyone they come across. Once again, educated people believe and this is and, and, and this is the this is the issue I have with stuff like with uh, excuses like this. Now, say you're going to Chicago, and someone says, "Hey, be careful because of what's going on in Chicago, the violence." People are quick to say, "Well, I'm not going to that part of Chicago." Same thing with like Rio de Janeiro. Hey, be careful when you go to Rio. You know, and they'll say, hey, well, we're not going to the, uh, I forgot what they call the ghettos in Rio. I don't want, it's not Barrio. I forgot what they call them. We're not going to that part. We're going to be over here in the tourist, touristy part. But for some odd reason, they won't use that same logic or give that, use that same reasoning when they go to Africa. So if someone says, hey, be careful, number one, they won't even say the country. You know, say you're going to Mali, another Mali. Say you're going to Ghana. You say, hey, I'm going to Ghana. Someone would literally say, hey, be careful uh, because of the violence that's going on in Congo. Be careful when you go to Ghana. Well, the fucking violence is way over in Congo. Do you know how far the Congo is the, or the DRC or the Central African Republic? Do you understand how far that is from Accra or from Ghana? But people will group the 54 countries that make up the continent of, of Africa as one big ass country and that if violence is going on somewhere in the Congo don't go to Senegal because of the violence that's going on in the Congo and see that's the reason I have that's the issue I have with excuses like this one okay they still think the Liberian and Sierra Leonean civil wars are still going on so that would stop them from visiting any country in Africa because of Charles Taylor, you know, what the, the civil war that took place in Liberia freaking 20, damn near 30 years ago. So that's excuse number two. Excuse number three, everyone has HIV in Africa. It's been proven that in Atlanta, the HIV rate is higher than the majority of countries in Africa. So we're not going to spend that too much time on that one. Like literally in Atlanta, Georgia, the HIV rate is higher than the majority of countries in Africa. But you will come to uh, Atlanta 
for uh, what events they got going on out here in Atlanta. Just whatever, just to come kick it, you know, go to Magic City or whatnot. You know, I think the Super Bowl that's coming to Atlanta, you have a lot going on in Atlanta. But the, H, the high HIV rate doesn't phase you. But you won't go to a country in Africa, even though the HIV rate in many in, in cities like Atlanta are higher. Bugs and mosquitoes are as big as frying pans. I'm telling you a true story. My only concern about going to Africa, or well, Tanzania when I first went to Africa, was, um, um, what's the shit mosquitoes give you? Malaria. Because I watched a, a documentary called Panther um, in, in, in Africa, I think it was called, or Panther in the Jungle, which, um, in fact, this is a good documentary. Let me, uh, so I can get my information straight, let me look this up real quick. Pete O'Neill, that's the brother's name, Pete O'Neill. And he, um, he, he, he went on asylum. Pete O'Neill, what's the name of the movie? Hold on. He went on exile in Africa, in, in Arusha, uh, which is a city in northern uh, Tanzania, which I've been to before. Pete O'Neill documentary. Let me get you the name of this documentary. You need to check this out. Panther in Africa. That's the name of it. Panther in Africa. Uh, check it out. It's actually on Netflix. So, in the, in the documentary, Pete O'Neill, he, he came down with malaria. So, that was my only concern. My buddy told me, Dinus, the one who, uh, convinced, who told me to, who recommended going to Tanzania. He said, Dinus, I, didn't, I saw one mosquito when I was in Tanzania. And literally, I myself saw one mosquito. And I tell people this. There are more bugs in Georgia in the summertime, all types of crawling shit in Georgia in the summertime than there is in all of Africa when I travel to Africa. So the bug excuse, if you live in Georgia or Florida, Texas, pretty much the south where just, there's bugs everywhere when it gets hot, when that sun comes out in the summer. If you can handle the bugs in the south, you can handle the bugs in Africa because there aren't a lot of bugs. I, don't, I never really saw them. There is nowhere to stay. Everyone lives in a straw mud hut. Again, bullshit. There was a hashtag that was trending called the Africa. They don't show the media doesn't show you. That show beautiful developments. I mean, you have just about every major hotel chain from Hilton, um, Marriott in, in Africa, in pretty in every country. So if you need the resort life, you could definitely get that in Africa. Uh, when you when travel to a country in Africa. So that's BS as well. Too much terrorism. All, the only really terrorist factions that you have in Africa, you have Boko Haram in Nigeria, northern Nigeria, and you have Al-Shabaab in Somalia. So again, another BS excuse on why not to go. Because when something happens for some odd reason, like say Al-Shabaab hits uh, Nairobi, they come to Nairobi and carry out a terrorist attack. For some odd reason, even though it's in Kenya, in Nairobi, people think it's affecting all of Africa. When again, Africa is comp composed of 54 countries on a big ass continent. But for some reason, if something happens in freaking Nairobi or in Kenya, that makes all of Africa unsafe, which is BS. But you don't use that same reasoning that if somebody gets shot in Chicago, Southside Chicago, you know, you're not going to stay away from Chicago. You're still going to travel. You're just going to not go to that certain part of the city or that certain part of Chicago where the violence is taking place. So, uh, the continent is complete anarchy. Again, another terrible excuse. I've done a video on that Africa is safer than the majority of places here in America. So, that's BS. There are no laws that pretty much falls under the, there's complete anarchy. Do, do some shit, in fact, do this. Steal some shit in the city in Africa and see what happens to you. In fact, let me tell you, in fact, there are laws. And the laws are stricter. See, here in America, if you get caught stealing something or doing something illegal, for the most part, you have a right to a lawyer, you have a right to a trial, uh, and all that other stuff. In Africa, you steal something, you getting your ass whooped. 
You do something illegal, you can get your ass whooped. And not by the police, by the citizens. The citizens will take the law in their own hands and beat your ass. So, trust me, there are plenty of laws. Everything is governed. No one speaks English there. Depends which country you go to. If you go to uh, English speaking countries, Ghana, Nigeria, Tanzania, uh, Kenya, South Africa, Namibia, uh, they speak English pretty well in Morocco. You know, if you go to countries like that, they speak English. Then again, you know, depending on which European country colonialized, which, uh, you know, a specific country in Africa, that determines which language they speak. But again, South Africa, Namibia, Ghana, um, Nigeria, Kenya, Tanzania, I know those countries for sure speak English as their, their main language. Uh, they don't have fast food places. Why in the hell would you want to travel to Africa to get some nasty McDonald's or Burger King or Taco Bell anyway? Some shit that's bad for you. Everything, what makes Africa great is everything is fresh. Every, like, everything is literally, if you order, if you go to a restaurant and sit down and have a chicken dish, the chicken, you know, was killed or, uh, or butchered that same day or maybe even a day before. If you notice when you go to countries in Africa, there aren't a lot of uh, um, grocery stores, as you know them here in the West. So stuff's not frozen. Uh, there's not a bunch of preservatives in the food to keep it, you know, to, to extend the shelf life. You have none of that. So you're actually getting healthier food in Africa and not all this processed crap. So by complaining that there aren't, there isn't McDonald's or Burger King or Taco Bell, the, the fast food chains that are literally making people sick here in America is stupid. When you get good, fresh food at the same price that you'll pay for McDonald's or Burger King here in America. Uh, the government is too corrupt. They think that Africa has one government. There are many corrupt governments. I will, I will somewhat agree with that as far as in the specific, some countries in Africa, but that doesn't affect your, that doesn't, I guess, affect your safety. You're, you'll still be safe even though there are some corrupt politicians. But again, there are corrupt politicians everywhere. You see what's going on right now. In America with Donald Trump and what the hell he's doing with his with his staff and this whole FBI situation or CIA with Comey and all that. You know, as far as giving information to the Russians or being bought by the Russians. So there are corrupt governments everywhere, but it doesn't affect your safety. Um, everyone has Ebola. That was some bullshit too. When Ebola hit Liberia, um, parts of Mali. You know, everybody was saying, hey, they wouldn't have put a travel ban on pretty much all of Africa because of the Ebola that was in Liberia. Again, just people being ignorant. Um, I, 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 I don't want to believe people are this stupid. I, I try to give people a shot and give them a chance, and you know. But I just, I don't think people are this stupid. Because Ebola's in Liberia, that shouldn't stop you from being able to travel to Kenya. And like literally, I read a story when the whole Ebola epidemic was, well not, I don't want really to say epidemic, when the Ebola situation was going on, how a lady from America, I think from Texas, traveled to Kenya, and the, the, her employee in Texas wouldn't let her back to school because of Ebola when she traveled to freaking Kenya. You know, that's how stupid people are, but I'm just, I hope that people aren't this stupid, but they really are. Um, they don't have safe roads, everything is made out of dirt and rocks. I tell people this, in countries like Namibia, South Africa, even Kenya, the roads are better than here in many parts of America. And that's a fact. Now, when you go to the countryside, you know, you might have some dirt rock roads, but that's here in America too. If you go to the countryside, you know, the, the, all the roads might not be paved. Uh, I might get kidnapped and beheaded. No. If anything, the people that get kidnapped and beheaded are the, the European t um, tourists. Because since you're black, they're going to either think you're African or since you're a black American or black European, they, <laughs> they're, they're not going to even bother uh, going after you because they, they're going to assume you don't have any money. The terrorists, they usually go after the white Europeans or white tourists. 
Uh, Africa is primitive and violent? No. Again, I think I've already covered that. Africans don't like African Americans. That's the bullshit too. When I travel to Africa, I'm shown nothing but love. It's too hot over there. Bro, the hottest place I've ever been to is Omaha, Nebraska in the summertime. Now, certain parts of Africa are hot, depending what country you go to. Um, Dogon country in Mali gets hot. Of course, the desert is hot, but it's the desert, like the Sahara Desert. But again, there are places here in America that, like I said, Omaha, Nebraska in the summertime, I was about to boil over there. They don't have clean water. Shit, Flint, Michigan, in a discussion. Um, you have to be a millionaire to be able to afford to travel to Africa. No, you don't have to be a millionaire to travel to Africa. You can find a round trip ticket to Africa to pretty much every country for less than $1,000. And then when you get there, the lodging situation, or if you know somebody, you can just stay with them. Very inexpensive. I don't speak in their clicking language. That's just a stupid ass ignorant excuse. I'm not going to cover that one. They don't have transportation over there. Everything is a 50 mile walk. Too many tribes committing genocide against each other. No, no, no. That's not in every country. That does not go on. Um, again, you might have a civil war here and there, but if you can handle the genocide against each other here in America, whether you call yourself a blood or a crib, and that is just that, or a vice lord or whatever, and that is to stop you to travel into that specific city, you'll be fine in Africa because they're not like that in Africa. There's nothing to do over there. Whatever. I don't eat zebras. They don't eat zebras over there as well. It's probably happened before, but you're not forced to eat zebras. So, again, I just wanted to run through this list of 25 dusty excuses on what that black Americans give for not traveling to Africa and how erroneous and stupid they are. So, again, I'm going to post the link to in the chat to... Um, I mean, in the uh, in the description box of this video. So I'll post a link there. Follow me on social media. Search for who on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, or Facebook. Dinah Samir. Till next time, I'm out.